a cursed video. Everyone who watches dies within a week. Today we'll go through an American supernatural horror film from 2017 called Rings. This is just my opinion on the movie and not a substitute for watching it. Links to the movie are in the description below. The movie starts in an airplane flying to Seattle. A man named Carter cannot stop moving his legs. A girl on the plane named Faith asks him what's wrong just to get him to stop. Carter goes on to tell his whole life story to the stranger. It turns out he met a girl at a party a week ago who asked him to watch a video. What harm can a video do, right? wrong. It was kind of a haunted video that kills everyone who watches it in a week. So our man Carter is basically about to die in a few minutes. Faith, rightfully so, thinks that the man is either a lunatic or serial killer, or maybe both. Carter runs to the plane's bathroom while Faith tells her friend Kelly the story she just heard. Kelly freaks out. Looks like this isn't the first time she's heard the story. Kelly runs to Carter and asks if he made a copy of the video. He says he hasn't. The airplane's radio starts to flicker and a video of a creepy girl starts playing on all the monitors. Then a strange liquid spreads on the floor. Soon a swarm of flies fills the plane. We all know where this is going. The plane crashes and everyone dies. Two long years after the crash, a girl named Skye is at a yard sale with her college professor Gabriel, who she's sleeping with. Gabriel finds Carter's old VCR player and buys it. At home, he tries to fix the VCR player and finds a tape inside. The tape plays a video of a bunch of weird stuff like a random chair, a girl brushing her hair, and then her jumping off a cliff. After watching the video, he gets a call from a girl who says, seven days, and hangs up. Ghosts in this movie are technology friendly. A fly emerges out of a cigarette, oh, makes me nauseous. Gabriel then goes to the window and sees rain falling upside down. Somewhere not so far away, a pretty girl named Julia is with a pretty boy named Holt. They're on Holt's bed, chatting. Holt is moving to a different town for college. Julia is sad and insecure because the new city equals new people equals new girls, you get the drill. After they say their goodbyes, Holt promises to call every day and leaves. For the first six weeks, they seriously Skype every night, talk about being clingy. One day they're Skyping when suddenly Holt's friends barge into his room and take him away to a party. Julia doesn't get a chance to say goodbye and is upset. She even texts him a couple of times, but he doesn't reply. For a whole two days, clingy Julia doesn't get a call from Holt. Suddenly at midnight, he Skypes her, but guess who's on the other end? Sky, the professor dating girl. She vaguely says that someone is coming for Holt and there's no hiding and the call ends abruptly. Like any normal girlfriend, Julia goes to visit Holt. Holt. The following day, she arrives at his campus and goes to his dorm room. She finds his phone and sees Sky's messages calling him to meet her after a class. Uh-oh, he might have been cheating. Julia then barges into Gabriel's lecture and asks him about Holt. Gabriel hints towards Holt cheating on her and leaves. Julia, with her psycho girlfriend senses, finds out that Gabriel is lying. She follows him and reaches a floor exclusive to the college students only and sees Gabriel meeting Skye, who is freaking out because her tail is gone. Don't ask me what that means, I'm just as clueless. Gabriel leaves after promising Sky he'll find her a new tail. Maybe they're talking about a Halloween costume. Julia approaches Sky and asks her about Holt. Sky wants Julia to come to her room and watch a video. Being dumb, Julia agrees. In her room, Julia finds Skye's phone with Holt's text on it. She texts him back as herself. Holt asks her not to watch the video, but right then, Skye plays a video on the laptop. Julia runs to the bathroom and locks herself as Skye begs her to watch it. What the hell is this video? Sky throws her laptop, but then the TV starts playing the video. She plugs it out, but it doesn't stop. She then pushes it on the ground, but it still doesn't stop. The video is persistent to be seen. Suddenly, a girl's ghost walks out of it. We're talking long hair, a white gown, and all that. Julia hears Sky crying for help, but stays in the bathroom. Smart and cruel. After everything falls silent, Julia walks out and sees poor Skye's distorted face. Holt arrives asking Julia if she watched the video. The two go back to Holt's room. Holt calls Gabriel who says that it's now Holt's turn again. He promises to find Holt a tail and hangs up. Okay, I don't think this is a Halloween costume thing anymore. Holt explains to Julia that everyone who watches the video will die in 7 days until they make a copy of the video and show it to someone else, passing them the curse and making them their tail. 
Oh, now we know. Sky had seen the video a week ago and was unable to make anyone her tale, so she died. Julia gets on his laptop at night and watches the video. The telephone rings and the girl from the other end says seven days. That's what you get for being a dumbass. Julia finds herself in front of a rusty door. She walks towards it and holds the doorknob, which burns her palm. Holt notices that she has seen the video. He doesn't say anything because she did this for him. The two then go to Gabriel's home where they find out Julia's version of the video is larger than anyone else's, which basically means the ghost takes a liking to her. That might be a good or a bad thing. Gabriel checks to find that the video has always held another video inside it, which Julia has received. New clips like a dead bird, a colony of ants making a cross, a pregnant girl, and a church are in the video. Gabriel takes a picture of the mark on Julia's palm because it looks legit. He has been researching the video and its origin and has found out that the girl is Samara who died years ago in a nearby town. Julia looks at the picture of the town's church which is similar to the one from the clip. The police call Gabriel to discuss Skye's death. He gives Julia his research reports and asks the two to go to the town and investigate. The report says that Samara was abandoned as an infant by her parents and was adopted by a family. But her life was never happy because her new family thought she was some kind of witch, so they threw her into a well to kill her. It doesn't end there. She didn't die from the impact and stayed at the bottom of the well for seven days before dying. If I were her, I would be causing a lot of trouble as a ghost too. The report doesn't say anything else. On their way, Julia sees the pregnant girl who she had seen in the clip but but she disappears. They check into a motel in the town. Julia sees the picture of the pregnant girl she saw in the video and on the road earlier. The owner tells him that the girl's name is Evelyn and she disappeared 30 years ago. Then the couple goes to the church which has now been abandoned. A massive bell catches Julia's eye, only because it's massive. They notice a graveyard beside the church and go to search for Samara's remains. Back home, Gabriel finds out that the burn markings on Julia's hand are written in braille. He translates it and freaks out. He tries calling Holt and Julia to warn them, but they don't pick up. Hence, he also leaves for the town. Julia and Holt find Samara's tomb and break the entrance, but they find no remains inside. Julia goes inside the freaking tomb and finds writing that says, she will find you, Julia. The two are then caught by the groundskeeper who seems to know what they're looking for. This isn't the first time someone's come looking for Samara. She's popular. The man takes him to a blind man named Galen Burke. Burke claims that Samara's remains were entombed by the local priest but was moved to another town because of a flood. The duo wants to give Samara a proper funeral so she can be free and go to heaven. Or hell for killing so many people. They make their way to her tomb in the other town but are stopped by the police because of an accident blocking the road. Julia sees a pregnant Evelyn again and follows her. Before she reaches the girl, she notices that the car that crashed was Gabriel's. An injured Gabriel tries to say something but dies before he can. Holt and Julia return back to the town with Gabriel's briefcase and none of the police stops them. At night, Holt goes out to get them something to eat while Julia watches the haunted video again. While re-watching it, she realizes that one of the clips shows the massive church bell she had seen earlier. Pingo, bullseye right on the money. She rushes to the church and finds a secret chamber below the massive bell. Inside, the place looks like a room. She sees the priest's gown and scratches on the wall as if someone has been counting days. The scratches are exactly eight and a half months, so someone might be pregnant. Hmm, who else is pregnant in the movie? That's right, Evelyn. Then, on the side, she sees several names scratched and crossed with Samara's name at the end. So, Evelyn was Samara's biological mother who was captured by the priest and kept in the room throughout her pregnancy. Why did the priest capture her? Because he was the father and Evelyn was just 17. Julia runs to Burke's home to ask him for the priest's whereabouts. Little does she know what's coming for her. At the same time, Holt is at a nearby diner chatting with the motel's owner. He figures out that blind Burke used to be the town's priest. Burke impregnated Evelyn, abducted her, made her give birth to Samara, abandoned the child, and then killed Evelyn. That's the ghost backstory. Julia is at Burke's and reveals to him that she knows what happened to Evelyn. Burke obviously wants to kill her now. Holt runs to Julia but doesn't find her in the room. His boyfriend instincts tell him that she's at Burke's home. Burke attacks Julia and she figures that he's Samara's father, the priest. Too late, girl, too late. She has an upper hand because Burke cannot see, but she still manages to get caught. 
She then pushes him down the stairs and comes across a doorway that looks exactly like the one she had seen when she got the mark on her palm. She stands before a wall that looks familiar to her for some reason. Julia breaks the wall and finds Samara's remains inside it. Ooh, spooky. Holt too arrives at the house and is almost immediately knocked unconscious by Burke. Burke then strangles Julia and is about a second away from killing her when the video starts playing on Julia's phone. Several flies start to latch onto the phone too. Burke feels someone standing behind him, but he's blind and Samara's ghost's mechanism works by showing people a video, so he's basically immune. But there's a catch. When he turns around to look at her, his vision clears and he gets a look at his ghost daughter. One look at her and his face starts to distort and he dies on the spot. This girl is Medusa 2.0. Later, Julia and Holt burn Samara's remains, hoping she will get peace and stop killing more people. The following day, Holt and Julia are together. Julia goes to shower as Holt discovers Gabriel's voice message telling him that the markings on Julia's hand are written in braille. Too late, Holt. Julia's skin on her palm falls off, revealing gray skin underneath. She coughs and brings out a clump of hair from her mouth. Ew. Holt's computer starts sending the creepy video to all of his contacts automatically. He unplugs all the wires, but the computer doesn't stop. The braille on Julia's palm translates to rebirth. Julia wipes off the vapor in the mirror and sees she has turned into the one and only Samara. No peace or heaven. This mofo now has numerous people she can kill on Earth and a human body of her own. So that's how the movie rings goes. Hope you liked the video. Don't forget to leave a like and comment. I'll see you next time.